Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, just a quick one. Just do some sound check. See if everybody can hear me. Okay. Do let me know if everybody can hear me and also can see my slides. Okay. If you can't hear me, you let me know. You can type in the comment box and I will be able to see you. Okay. Great. I think everybody can hear and can see. Okay. So, okay. Great. Most of the people is able to hear me. Great. Okay. So let's start our webinars tonight. So before I start, uh, before I start, just a quick introduction about myself. So my name is William and I am a dealer and also a marketing executive at Philip Futures. So my main job is to guide people to trade futures and also to brief people about futures. And me, myself, uh, I, I focus a lot on, I, I do a lot of research on CPO fundamental. So, so if you have questions about the fundamental, especially on the supply and demand side, you can always ask me. You can also put your questions, your thoughts at the end of the, at the end of the, during the Q&A session. Okay. So before I start, right, just a quick usual disclaimer. So whatever they are share tonight is only knowledge sharing purpose and it's not a buy and sell call. If you need personal advice on how to trade or everything, anything, you can contact us personally to, uh, to advise you on a one to one basis. Okay, so uh, just a quick one about our company in case there are new people that join us tonight. So our company, Philip Futures, we are incorporated on October 1995 and our mother company, uh, the founding company is actually from Singapore. So we are considered as a Singaporean company. However, our HQ Philip Capital Holdings is based in Kuala Lumpur. So we actually have branches all over Malaysia. Okay, Sabah, Cebu, Kuching, JB, Malacca, Penang, you know, uh, KD. Uh, so we have we have branches all over the place. Huh? So if you need to find us, you can find us at your convenient branches. So uh, Philip Futures, we are a trading and also a clearing participants of Busan, Malaysia. So with that, we have this thing called the CMSL license, which makes us a legal broker house to operate in Malaysia. So our company, right, is the first broker in Malaysia that actually introduced online trading for both local and foreign products under one single platform. So meaning to say, if you are trading the US or you are trading the Malaysia market at the same time, right, you don't have to log in to multiple platform. You can trade everything under one roof, okay, which is also one of the reasons why we are the top choices for a lot of professional Malaysia traders in Malaysia. So in 2021, if you are our client, right, you trade with us, uh, just want to take this opportunity to say a very big thank you to you. Okay, without you, we won't be able to achieve this. So last year, 2021, we actually got this three up as the first runner up for these three awards. We are the best overall, best retail and best institutional derivative trading participants of Busan Malaysia. Okay, so our mother company, Philip Capital, we actually have presence in over 14 different countries, okay? All the countries you see here, we, our mother company, Philip Capital, do have offices in this country. And with that, we don't only offer products in Malaysia. We also offer products from the U US, uh, from Singapore, from Hong Kong, etc., etc. Okay, however, tonight we are going to talk about CPO, which is from Busan, Malaysia. So, uh, our company name, Philip Futures, so our focus is always on futures trading, okay? So futures can be divided into a few different categories, okay? Interest rate, indexes, uh, energy, agriculture, and metal. And tonight, we are going to, to go deep into the FCPO, the crude palm oil futures, which is under the agricultural futures, okay? So other than futures, right, we also offer CFD. I'm not sure whether... Any of you are familiar with CFD trading? Uh, in full name, it's called the contract for difference. So basically, CFD trading it allows we allows our clients to trade the US stocks, the US indexes, or the Bursa Malaysia stocks at a very very attractive leverage. So if you want to know more about our CFD trading, you can contact us. We can let you know more about it. Okay. So why trade with us? First of all, our company we offer twenty four hour support. So uh, if you, if you are trading the, with those foreign brokers or stuff, right? Usually, I don't think it's that easy for you to contact to contact them if you face any issue. But for us, we offer twenty four hours 
support. As long as the market is open, we are there. Okay, we have a night days that you can always find will be able to reach. Okay, we also offer latest market updates for our exclusively only for our clients. Okay, and if you need more personal advice, you can contact us. We are more than happy to. We are more than happy to guide you through. Okay, we are more than happy to guide you through to help you to find a product that is suitable for you from the very wide range of products that I just mentioned earlier. Okay, so if you are new to futures, don't worry. We have this one-to-one -one coaching session. You can always contact us. Okay, we can we can set up a session with you to let you know everything about futures. Okay, and uh, we do have these webinars from on a monthly basis that you can join for free. And hopefully, in certain half of the year we will have our seminars back okay so you can just come to pop by our uh the, the branches that is nearest to you to attend our seminar account opening is always free of charge we don't charge anything you just need to fund in to activate your account that's it okay so if you want to open an account uh you can just scan this qr code uh if you scan it you will be able to open your account at the comfort of your own home okay we are the only broker in malaysia and also the first broker in malaysia that have this online trading account for futures okay so if you want to open from the comfort of your house we are the only option okay at your convenience so just a quick one to show you our platform so we use Flip nova for all our clients okay this is our in-house developed platform uh we have over 90 different indicators so definitely you will be able to find something for you we, you can buy and sell directly from the chart okay as far you see a lot of people they they like to trade directly from the chart nowadays and like i said just now uh, you can trade both foreign and local products under this one single platform okay uh, this is a demo account uh, so if you scan this qr code you want to take a look how our platforms look like you can do so okay okay so basically that is all about our company okay so uh, just a quick one uh, to start off so our webinars tonight our topic we are going to talk about the crude palm oil spread trading okay uh, so this is more like an introduction to the spread trading so uh it requires some basic understanding of futures like at least you know what is your futures already in order for you to understand this one so we will we will talk about four items here the first one is what actually is a crude palm oil calendar spread trading a lot of people i believe you guys have been seeing a lot of people talking about spread trading lately okay the second one how the supply and demand of the crude palm oil affect the spread prices the third one uh, just a quick overview about the outlook of the CPO for the second half of the year. And the last one, how to trade this calendar spread using the technical analysis. Okay, so let's start off with what is a crude palm oil calendar spread trading? So calendar spread meaning to say that uh, you basically you buy and sell, right? Two different contracts, two different CPO contracts with different contract month at the same time, simultaneous meaning you buy and sell at the same time. For example, you can, you can, what is the active month right now? July, right? So you can buy July and sell August, okay? Or you can sell July and buy August. So no matter which direction you do, but you must enter simultaneously together. That we call spread. So basically you just earn the price difference in between the two months, okay? So basically trader can either uh, long the spread, we call the buy the spread, or we short the spread, which means we sell the spread. So what does buy a spread mean? So when people tell you, you can long the spread right now, what does it mean? So long the spread actually means that you buy the near month contract and you sell the far month contract. So what is the near month? So July is active month right now. So near month is definitely July. Okay. And you sell the far month, you can sell August, you can sell September. It's up to you, okay, based on your own strategy. But definitely, you buy the near month and short the far month. So this is we call buying the spread. What about short the spread? So, so, so short the spread is like vice versa. So you sell the near month, okay? You can sell July and you buy August or you buy September. This we call shorting the spread, okay? Short the spread. So for example, I think I, I explained this. You can buy July, you sell August. This one we call long the spread. We can sell July or buy August. This we call shorting the spread. Okay, so it's very, it's very direct when people tell you you should long or short the spread. Then you should know what to do. Okay, mm. okay. So now 
for people that don't know how does the price calculation of the spread, this is how we calculate it. Okay. So first of all, you look at it. Let's say if today we buy the spread, right? Okay. Let's say we buy the spread. We buy July August. People tell you, okay, let's buy July August spread, meaning we long the July August spread. So that means that if you look at this particular image underneath here, you look at July. Okay. July, the last time price is 6802. Okay. July last time price. August. Last time price is 6490. Okay. So if people say we long the spread, meaning you long these prices. So you take 6802 minus 6490, you get the spread is 312. So this particular button, this particular order type here is for you to enter the spread simultaneously. Meaning if you buy via this, uh, this, uh, this is our Nova, by the way. So if you long the July August spread, right? You can you directly this order type will help you to buy July and short the August contract. Okay. If you short the spread like this one, you sell July, you buy into August. If you you click this sell button, okay, immediately you will have a short July and buy August contract on your hand. Okay. So this particular one is for you to enter your spread order simultaneously. So if you don't know how to, if you are already our client, you don't know how to find this thing in our platform, you can contact your respective dealer. They should be able to guide you through how to, how to find the, 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 the order type of the spread. Okay. So now when you loan the spread, right? Now the last time price is 312. So when you loan the spread, if the spread go up to 322, okay, you profit 10 points. Okay, which is exactly like how you calculate your profit and loss in the outright CPO. So one point equivalent to 25 ringgit. Okay, so basically it goes up 10 points, you profit 250 and vice versa. If it drops 10 points and you loan the spread, you will lose 250. So basically your position is being hedged because you have one long, one short. So your volatility is way, way, way smaller than the outright because you hedge your, your position. Okay. Now, if you sell the spread, meaning to say that the the up the the get the prices, these two prices get go down go down from three one two to three zero two, you profit ten points, okay? And vice vice versa. If the spread go up, then you lose money when you short the spread, okay? I hope this this thing is clear, okay? Now let's move on to the next one. This is the questions that many people have in their mind. They don't know what the spread is about. People are very confused about spread, okay? But don't confuse about spread. Spread trading is actually very direct. It's just trading the CPO supply tightness. You don't care the rest. You don't care how the, the soybean oil move. You don't care how the crude oil prices move. It doesn't matter. It doesn't af affect the spread prices. The spread prices is very focused. Focus on the CPO supply tightness, okay? So what is the CPO supply tightness? When supply is greater than demand, okay, when supply is greater, uh, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I think I, I have this thing, uh, I write this thing wrong, okay, should be when demand is greater than supply, okay, sorry, uh, this one, I have some mistake here. When demand is greater than supply, right, when demand is bigger than supply, the near month CPO prices will go up more, more aggressively than the far month CPO prices. This is when you long the spread. Okay, so when you think that the demand is extremely high right now, you should long the spread, meaning the, the, the spread will go up because of the supply tightness. Now, when the supply is bigger than the demand, when supply is bigger than the demand, right, the farmer CPO prices will go up slower than the farmer CPO prices. Okay, will go up slower than the, the farmer will go up, uh, slower than the, 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 the far month will go up more than the near month, okay? The near month will go up slower than the far month. This is when we short the spread, okay? I, I hope this part is, un, uh, is clear, okay? So when demand greater than supply, you long the spread. When supply greater than demand, you short the spread. This is basically the whole concept of spread trading is about, okay? I'll give you one example for you to, to understand this concept. Uh, do you remember back in 2020 April, everybody just rushed to the supermarket to buy the toilet paper? Do you remember that? So imagine toilet paper is actually a futures contract, right? When people tell you toilet paper, if you don't buy it now, you won't be able to get it two months later. 
you will need to to wash your sheet you won't be able to there is no toilet paper for you so under these kind of circumstances right will you pay the premium in order for you to buy your toilet paper now like july okay now it's it's july uh, april we talk about april now now it's april will you pay premium say usually toilet paper sell you 10 ringgit per row are you willing to pay 20 ringgit in order to buy it right now if your answer is yes then the demand for april toilet paper is really really high so the prices for april will go up a lot more than the prices maybe in may or june okay then in these cases you long the spread okay you long the spread so this is basically the whole the whole spread trading is about you trade the, the supply and demand only okay so now uh after we understand what is spread trading about we need to know the type of market in spread trading okay there are basically only two types we this is very important for us to know okay first one we call the backwardation market so what is the backwardation market backwardation means that uh backwardation means that uh the near month prices is higher than the far month prices as you can see here i cropped this from busan malaysia by the way okay so this is may contract this is uh july and then november december january you know all the way down so the near month prices is higher than the far month prices this thing we call backwardation so backwardation means that the near month contract is higher than the far month contract prices okay so what does it mean it means that the buyers are very desperate for the cpo they just want to buy the cpo okay hence they are willing to pay for higher prices now it's just like using back the toilet paper theory like in april everybody tell you there is no toilet paper next month or in in july so everybody just willing to pay for higher prices and not the the near month contract prices is very high okay it's a, actually a bullish sign for CPO as it shows the supply tightness in the near month. Okay, it shows the supply tightness. Now, this is backwardation market. Now, let's look at the second type of the market. We call it the contango. Okay, so what is a contango? Uh, by the way, because CPO is currently in backwardation, so I won't be able to show you a contango movement in, in CPO right now. I, I saw wheat is actually in contango. So I, I show you wheat prices. I got this from the CME exchange, okay? So contango means that the near month prices is actually lower than the far month, okay? Which means the far month contract is higher than the spot month contract prices. The far month is higher than the near month. This we call the contango. So what is the contango? Contango means that the buyer are not willing to buy now because it has that cost of carry so what is the cost of carry cost of carry is like your storage cost your insurance so for example if you buy your palm oil right now okay you buy your palm oil right now uh oh sorry sorry if you don't buy your, if you want to buy your palm oil right you don't buy it now you buy a lot further let's say six months later okay the seller needs to store for your 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 palm oil and when they store it in the warehouse there is a cost for it and they need to buy insurance for it to prevent the, the 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 fire you know so they need to pay for the insurance the storage costs etc etc so in theory when supply and demand is actually neutral right equilibrium or something uh we should be in the the cpo should be in the contango market okay because the farmer incurred the cost of storage the insurance cost so it should theoretically it should be higher okay but this is not the case in the cpo market right now Okay, it's actually a neutralized or bearish sign and shows that the near term supply is greater than demand when we see a contango market in CPO. Okay, now I show you this is a trend, the spread trend uh, from 2015 to 2022. Okay, this is the, the CPO spread market trend in 2015. I got this from Bloomberg. Okay, so if you look at the spread market, right, from 2015 or 2014, until mid of 2016 right the cpo spread market is actually trading in contango as you can see this is the outright prices right this is the outright prices as you can see the outright prices is very depressed okay outright prices is very depressed so the spread is trading in a contango market contango meaning the near month prices is lower than the farm month. so the spread is always in negative territory the red color means it's in negative territory in 2016 to 2017 
go back to a backwardation market in positive territory. And then from 2017 to 2019, back to the contango market. So, so there is a trend for it. Okay. So we can net, we don't always assume that the market will always forever in a backwardation market or will always forever in a contango market. Okay. We don't assume that. Okay. So there is a trend for it. This is very important. Now, why is it so important for us to understand whether are we in a contango market or are we in currently in backwardation market? Why? Why is it so important to understand this? Because Whenever you know that we are in a backwardation market, right? As long as you see the spread prices going back to this zero or is very near to zero, the neutral level, it's always good to long the spread. Okay. It's always good to long the spread because you know that the market supply is still very tight. You know, the, the general market is in backwardation. So as long as the, the prices is very near to zero, it's always good to long. Okay. Always opportunity to long. So, so it's very, very important for you to understand what is the current spread market at the moment? Which type are we in? Are we in contango or are we in backwardation? This is super important to know in order for you to succeed the spread market trading, okay? Because you know when you need to do what, okay? Now, after we know what is the spread trading, now let's look at how the supply and demand affect the CPO spread prices. I just give you some example. Okay, I give you some example because people, a lot of people, they don't know how the spread prices move versus the supply and demand. Okay, basically there are four things to look at for CPO spread prices. These are the fundamental prices, the fundamental factors affecting the spread prices. Okay, the, the first two, we look at the supply. So what is the supply? Supply is like the production, the inventory level, these are the supply. So what are the demand? The demand is like the export, uh, the edible oil inventory status in, in China, in India, et cetera, et cetera. Because China and India, they are the top two uh, importer of palm oil from Malaysia, okay? And also from Indonesia. So they are the top two consumption country of the palm oil. So we, the, their edible oil inventory level is super crucial. So these are demand, these are the supply. Let's look at them one by one, okay? So what are the current inventory level? This is the supply side, okay? What are the current inventory level? So if you look at it, right? In 2018, <clears throat> in 2018 the average inventory in Malaysia is about 2.5 million tons, okay? It's about 2.5. In 2019, it's also about 2.5 million. 2020, the inventory directly dropped to 1.7 million. This is where the CPO really started in 2020 because the average inventory in 2020 dropped so much, you know. This is insane, you know. So in 2021, continue to drop, okay. At this moment, we are talking about average for the first four months is about 1.54 million, okay. It's not high either. From, from a very high... From the pre-COVID level, we are still 1 million tons away. So this 1 million tons, I don't think it's so easy to, to recover la, or to replenish, you know. So even if we are not able to go back to this 2.5, we need to at least go back to 2 million and above this line here. We need to be at least go above 2 million in order for our inventory to go back to a normal level, okay. So probably when our inventory go above the 2 million tons, right, the CPO spread market will go back. It's probably, uh -huh, it's, it's not a confirmation. It's just my point of view. As long as we start the, to see the inventory level to go above these 2 million tons or back to these 2.5 million tons, CPO spread market might go into contango again. So when we go into contango, then you know it's, it's the spread market will always be trading in that negative territory already. So the near month prices is probably going to be lower than the five month prices, you know? So it's important for us to know. So at this juncture, CPO inventory in Malaysia remain very tight in 2020 because it's low, as I show you the statistic, okay? A very tight inventory level is actually bullish for the CPO spread market and CPO prices will likely to remain in that backwardation market as long as the inventory level stay at this kind of level. Okay, now second thing, we look at the supply, which is the production. So if you look at the CPO production for the first four months, sorry, this should be four months, not quarter, January to April, it increased by, so first four months in 2021 versus, hey, sorry, this one I got typo here again, this is 2022, uh, sorry. So 
first four months in 2021 versus first four months in 2022, okay, in 2022, we see our production going up by 1.5%. Okay, however, if you look at export, the next thing that we look at, the increase in production is actually slower than the increase in export. Hence, it's bullish for the CPO spread market. Okay, it's bullish because this is the demand, which is the export. So just now we talk about production, which is the supply. Supply up by 1.5% for four months. Demand up by 4.3% over the four months. Okay, this is first four months in 2021. This is first four months in 2022. Up from 3 million to 3.5 million, our export. Okay, so strong export is bullish for the CPO spread market. It's bullish because it shows that supply tightness. Okay, now we look at the third one. Which is the demand from, uh, from from China and India? Let's look at China first. Okay, this is the inventory, edible oil invent China edible oil inventory in China. Okay, so if you look at April, right? This is April here. You look at these blue lines here because it collides with the, uh, it's sticking together with the yellow line, so you can't see it clearly. But if you look at this thing, in my mouse here, uh, this is April. Okay, this is April. It remains very low, you know. If you look at over the five years, it's actually at, almost at the bottom of five years, so it remains very tight. So strong CPO demand from China will definitely lower the CPO inventory in Malaysia. And this particular is bullish for the CPO spread. Okay, it's bullish for it because the China inventory is low, they are going to buy to replenish. Same for India. If you look at India, this is India money and inventory. So if you look at it, right, it, it actually came below this five years level, this is like five years low, this particular one, you know, the light blue line, okay? It's super tight, India is even worse than inventory level, you know, so they will definitely need to buy. So if they buy, it's bullish for the CPO spread because our inventory will drop, okay? So I give you some example, how does the, the MPOB data, the supply and demand data affect the CPO spread prices, okay? So first of all, we look at the, uh, this is from February, changes from February to March. Okay, we look at February to March. So if you look at this palm oil inventory in February, is 1.5. Okay, when we move to March, is 1.47. So there's a drop to it. Okay, this, so palm oil inventory changes, changes, right, is the result of movement in supply and demand. So, so, so we have 1 plus 1 equal to 2. That 2 is, is the changes between 1 and 1, you know. So, so it's like the movement of supply and demand showing you the result, which is the, the inventory level, that is the result. So how does the CPO spread prices react to this particular drop, 1.47, okay? How does it react? So MPLB announced the data on the 10th of every month, okay? Every, the 10th of every month. So if 10th of, of the month is a public holiday or is a weekend, then it will announce the next business day. So in this case, it announced on the, 11th of April, okay? So it announced on 11th of April, inventory dropped from 1.51 to 1.47. You see, this is the day. So what happened to the spread after that, okay? Spread go up. So if you loan the spread, this shows what? Supply tightness, supply tightness. So if you loan the spread, then you will make money from it. You see, this is 120. So if you loan the spread from 120 to 3, 320 or 340, how, let's say you, you long it to 320, how many points is in between? 200 points. So 200 points times 25 is 5,000 ringgit per pair of spread. This is uh, July, August. Okay, this is July, August spread. So meaning if you long the spread, you, you long July contract, you short the August contract, the supply is tight, then you make money out of it because the, the, the spread will go up. Spread will go up meaning to say that, a, uh, July prices go up more aggressively than the August prices. Then you make money out of the spread, okay? So this is how the supply and demand affect the CPO spread prices. So July and August spread went up aggressively after the MPOB announced the very low inventory level. You remember what are the inventory level that I told you just now? 1.57 or 1.45, 1.55, some, somewhere there. Huh? Just like I told you the the, the average, you see, 1.55. You see, that is the average benchmark at the moment. And if you look at this one, 1.47 is way below the benchmark. So definitely it's very bullish, you know? Okay, 
I give you another example. This is the, the latest example, which is at this moment. Just now I show you the month before. Let's talk about right now. So if you look at right now, right, this is from March to April. So April is this is like fresh hot from oven. When does MPOB announce the April data two days ago on the 10th of April, on the 10th of May? Okay, this thing is announced on the 10th of May. However, <clears throat> analysts will usually announce the estimates. Okay. Analysts will always announce the estimate uh, five, five days, five to eight days before the MPOB official data. Okay, usually five to eight days in between. Like, huh? Before the MPOB data, there were all the analysts from Reuters, from Bloomberg, from CIMB, uh, uh, basically all the, all the, all the analysts, like, huh? they will give their view on the supply and demand. So in this case, right, Bloomberg actually give their view of the April supply and demand on the 30th of April. On the last day of April, Bloomberg released this data. So from March 1.47 increased to 1.66, you see? So Bloomberg analysts estimate the inventory to go up from 1.47 to 1.66. That's like a 13% increase. So how does CPO spread prices actually react to this 13% increase of inventory? If you look at it, okay, this particular day, is the day that uh, the first opening market after Bloomberg announced the, the production and export data on the 30th of April. Inventory go up by 13%. So how does the, 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 the spread market react? Okay, so Bloomberg announced April supply and demand on 30th of April. July, this is again, I use back the same pair, July, August. So July, August spread actually dropped after Bloomberg estimates released due to the increase of inventory level. So spread prices is very, very sensitive to the supply and demand. Okay, it's very, very sensitive to the supply and demand. So basically, this is how the CPO supply and demand affect the spread prices. Okay, I just give you some example for you to take a good look about it. Okay, now let's take a look at, uh, I think uh, this is also a question that a lot of people have in mind, which is the outlook of the crude palm oil for the second half of the year. Okay. Again, uh, how does CPO prices move basically depends on supply and demand again. Okay, this is the, the most common thing about commodities trading. It's always about supply and demand. Okay, so let's look at the supply side, the production seasonality. We need to understand this one in order for us to predict what is going to happen moving forward. The second thing is the supply from Indonesia. And the third thing is the development of the Ukraine and Russia tension. This affects definitely the supply because Ukraine and Russia, <clears throat> I think everybody knows it already, is a big supplier of the sunflower oil. Okay, the missing sunflower oil can only be replaced by palm oil. So that affects the demand as well. Actually affects the demand as well from the European because European use a lot of sunflower oil. Without that, the missing sunflower oil, they, re they replace it with palm oil. So the demand for palm oil will increase with the tension. Okay, the fourth one, we look at the demand from China, India, and just now I mentioned about European. So usually a lot of people, they don't talk about Europe. They only talk about China and India. But because of the tension, right, I look at Europe because Europe becomes a key players now because of the missing sunflower oil. They need palm oil to, re to replace it. So Europe becomes a key player right now for us to monitor. Okay, so let's look at the seasonality of the palm oil production. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look at the seasonality, right, because Malaysia, although we don't have that four season, but we have monsoon season, okay, we have monsoon season. So uh, this is the seasonality. So basically this uh, yellow, uh, the blue line is 201A, red line is 201I, green line is 2020, purple is 2021. So these are the production from March to June. These are the production from July to October. These are the production from November to February. So if you look at this production seasonality, right, we know that March to June is the, is the moderate season. Okay, March to June is the moderate season. It's like in between the two. July to October, this is the peak season because it's summer, okay, less rain, high production season. And November to February is the low season, is the monsoon, which means it's the low production season. So if you remember, usually right before Christmas or a month before Christmas, you will see that 
Malaysia, we always have that raining season already, rain all the time, until when? Until Chinese New Year is over. So when is Chinese New Year? Chinese New Year is in February. So it's very easy for you to remember when is the monsoon season already. So after the monsoon, it's definitely followed by a four months of moderate. So after the four months, definitely followed by a peak season because we, we enter summer. So weather is always hotter in between this period. Okay, so this is the CPO production seasonality. So if you understand the seasonality, you should know that moving forward, okay, moving forward from July to October, our production will start to go upwards. Okay, production is going to start to go upwards. So if production increase, and it needs to see whether the export is going to increase even greater than production. Okay, if it is not, then probably then probably the prices will have pressure. If the export go up even faster than the production going up, picking up, that CPO prices will continue to get stronger. But at least we know one thing for sure, production is picking up. Okay, well, production is going to start to pick up a month after. Okay, now let's look at the supply side now. Supply from Indonesia, okay. So Indonesia, right, everybody knows that since January, February, Indonesia start to implement this DMO. Okay, FUNEM, they call it the domestic market obligation, meaning to say, DMO meaning to say, the, the planters in Indonesia, they can't sell everything to foreign, foreign countries. They can't export everything. They have an obligation to keep certain amount of their CPO and sell it domestically in Indonesia. Okay, so because the government banned the export, right, the pump inventory is actually building up. Okay, so Indonesia, they, they, the Indonesia, this is from GAPKI, uh, all this statistic. So GAPKI is the Indonesia Palm Oil Association. So usually they release their data a bit slower than Malaysia, like two months to three months slower usually. So they only update up to February. Okay, so if you look at it, right, Indonesia, the palm oil inventory at this moment is actually very, very high, you know. It's even higher than the rest of the year. So this, I think, traders should pay very close attention at this moment. And also after the two to three weeks of export ban, right, at this moment, like, oh, at this moment, in Indonesia inventory is definitely building up, which is why you can see that this week, if you are monitoring the CPO market, this week, right, this week, since Monday until today, Thursday, the buying interest is actually very, very low. The liquidity is low. The buying interest is low. You know, I think the big players, they are not very willing to buy at these prices at this moment until they see some clearer view on the policy of the export in Indonesia. I think everybody just have that worry that the supply will flood the market in like the supply shock for a short term. Right? Because Indonesia, we all know that Indonesia is piling up their inventory. Okay, it's piling up. So this is something that traders should pay very close attention. Although there is a correct a price correction, uh, the global edible oil market is still in deficit, still tight. But this particular news is, is going to shock the CPO prices if suddenly the whole thing comes up. Okay, so traders should pay very close attention to the stock level in Indonesia. Okay, now after we look at, we understand the supply from Indonesia, we need to understand the Ukraine and Russia tension. Also the supply, like I mentioned earlier. So this news is published on the 29th of April, okay? It's published on the 29th of April. So the minister of the Ukraine, right? The agriculture minister, it says that uh, the planting area, sowing area is the planting area could fall 20% this year due to Russian troops uh, fighting in many of their planting region. You know, the, the whole entire agriculture planting in, in in Ukraine is going to drop 20% at least, okay? And like I mentioned, more than 80% of the sunflower oil export globally are actually from Ukraine and Russia. And Ukraine expect the planting area of agriculture to drop by 20% due to the war, okay? And also, uh, I think in order for you to monitor what are the status of the, the supply tightness or the edible oil tightness in European, right? Because uh, usually European buy, buy a lot from them, uh, I think, uh, because European, they use more sunflower oil than palm oil, actually. So you, you, you want to monitor how is the edible oil status in the European country. I think we can monitor the Malaysia palm oil export to the Europe as an indicator. So as long as you see that European buying more, our export to Europe increase, right? Okay, our, our the thing increased. A strong 
I think our CPO inventory is going to drop because they buy more. I think I have a, I have a, I have a statistic here. I will show you later. Okay. So a strong import from Europe, right? Could signal a supply. There is still a supply shortage in edible oil market. Why? Why a, a strong export indicate a supply shortage in Europe? Because in 2018 and 2019, right? European Union, they actually decide to slowly phase out the palm oil usage due to the ESG issue. So they say our palm oil is not sustainable, blah, blah, blah. They decide to slowly phase out, don't want to use palm oil for blending, for biodiesel, etc., etc. Lots of, uh, lots of, you know, reason and stuff. Like that. So because of their decision to, to phase out palm oil usage, you can see that. Obviously, you can see from the export. Like that. So the export from European in 2020, actually 10, 30, 37% from January to April. Okay, this I compare year to year, like, four months, year to year. So you can see, obviously, the whole thing dropped like, uh, in 2021, okay? But we are slowly, slowly seeing uh, purchases from Europe starting to pick up already. As you can see, uh, four months in 2021 versus four months in 2022, the supply, uh, the uh, the purchases from Europe actually increased by almost 14%. Okay, so increased demand from EU will lower our palm oil inventory. Okay, so so as long as you see this thing picking up, okay, as we see this export to Europe picking up or growing up, then likely likely it's a signal that the edible oil market in the European could probably is still very tight. Like they still can't get their hands onto the sunflower oil. Etc. Etc. That they need the palm oil in order to as a replacement. So this is a way for us to monitor the the European market status of the edible oil. The easiest and also uh, all of us have that data from the NPOB website. Okay. Now, after we look at that, this is a repetitive chart, but just for me to show you again. Okay, demand from China is low. Okay, supply tightness. Demand from India is also very low. Okay. Now, so after I show you all the all the statistics just now let's put everything together let's put everything together we wrap the whole thing up so what to expect in cpo for the second half first of all we know that we are entering the production season okay we are entering the production season okay so in order for us to monitor what will really happen we need to monitor the export as well so is the export is the demand greater than the supply because we definitely know that supply is coming up soon okay it's coming up soon and the second one, Indonesia, like I mentioned just now, Indonesia palm oil inventory is building up. It's seriously building up. Okay. And they are going to lift their export. So I think this is the reason why at this moment, the buying interest is very low. Everybody is waiting for the Indonesia policy. Nobody dares to buy uh, with the inventory built up. Okay. So be careful if you are long, uh, if you long the outright prices and hold for a long period like all, because uh, once Indonesia uh, do something of their rumors before we knew it, the prices could reflect already. So need to be careful on this one. If this one, Indonesia is seriously building up some inventory there. Okay. So the third one, Ukraine and Russia tension. So this one, how, how do we monitor it? We look at the export to Europe. Okay. We can look at the export to Europe in order for us to watch the, 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 the sunflower oil or the European market supply issue, okay? The supply tightness, okay? So the first, the fourth thing, uh, in my opinion, I think China, India, and Europe are definitely still going to buy lots of it because the inventory is low, okay? So, so overall, we put everything together. In my own opinion, I think for the second half of the year, CPO prices is still going to be remain quite high. Like, I don't think it can go, can crash below that 5,005 because globally, the edible oil market space is still very tight. Okay, still very tight. So, so if you ask me, prices is definitely going to be support above 5,005. It's just that at this particular moment, this particular moment in the next one, two weeks, two to three weeks, we need to watch out the, the inventory be out in Indonesia and the Indonesia export release. Probably then I put a quarter over it again after they lift the export. Nobody knows. Okay. So this thing is that's why I think the buyers. Are very reluctant to buy at this moment like don't know what is happening okay so so now after we understand the fundamental of cpo right now people will say fundamental is just too difficult too time consuming for you to understand so the easiest way is to try it with the technical 
analysis. I think spread is amazing to track with technical analysis, even if you don't understand the fundamental. Okay, even if you don't understand the fundamental, it doesn't matter. Okay, fundamental, I'm telling you just because I want you to understand how does the spread movement, uh, how does the spread CPO's calendar spread move based on the fundamental, but doesn't matter if it is too complicated for you, no problem. Okay, we can purely use the technical analysis to trade it. There's totally no problem at all. Okay, just like how you trade the stocks market. Okay, because if you look at, okay, go back to the July and August calendar spread. Okay, so if you look at this particular, right, step one, definitely it's always the same trading structure. We identify the market structure, which is we identify the market trend. Okay, so there are so many ways to identify the market trend. You can use the moving average, you can use the higher high, higher low setup, you can use the MSED, you know, there are so many ways for you to identify the trend. It is up to your own personal preference. Anyhow, you just write with the trend, you don't fight against it. Okay, so what is the trend? As long as the candlestick is moving above the 20 and 50 days moving average, it's likely a change of trend can be from downtrend to uptrend when the candlestick move from 20 and 50 days below it to above it, okay? That is a change of trend. A higher high and higher low setup can be a change of trend. As you can see here, there are three higher low. This is a sign of a change of trend. So here you can see is a higher high, you see, higher high. So this is a sign of changing of trend. And if you want to use MACD, it's the same. You see, this is a signal line. As long as the line starts to go above that neutralize, it's a change of trend. So it's up to you whether what, what indicator or what market chart structure you want to use to identify the trend. Okay, now the second one is to identify the, the support and resistance. Okay, so as you can see, resistance over the when this is from like March, you know, March until April, one month resistance suddenly become your support. So this can be your signal already, okay? For me, spread is the best way to trade is because, you know, you trade the breakup, you don't have to worry that much because what? You look at here, right? It's about 120, 130, somewhere here. You look at it. Okay, so what are your risks here? If you trade the breakup, let's say you trade the breakup, lah, huh? you trade the breakup, what are your risks? It's somewhere here. This is like 80 to 90, somewhere here, like, oh, slightly below. So what is your risk? 120, assuming 130 like, oh, to 80, that is like 50 points, okay? This allows you to trade 50 points of risk or what allows you to trade the whole trend, you know? So after that, you can always identify using support and resistance, okay? Now, identify the stop loss. Like I mentioned just now, you enter a breakout. What is your stop loss? Stop loss can be placed slightly below the breaking up candle. In this case, actually, this candle, like, you doesn't need to stop loss down here, like, unless your risk appetite is very, very big, like, oh, or else you can just put slightly below it, okay? Or you can just straight away put it below here if you if you don't want to get washed up, okay? You, you just identify your stop loss, huh? at what level that you prove you wrong, you want to exceed, okay? You just follow your own, how you trade the stock market, you can completely apply it here because the volatility in spread market is not as crazy as the outright market. Outright market volatility nowadays is quite insane. One day swing can be like 300, 400 points. Okay, but in spread market, the volatility now is, is easier for lots of people to accept to solo. Okay, now the last one, identify the profit taking point. Okay, now you want to identify this one first of all, what is your target? Do you want to capture the whole swing and ride the whole trend? Or do you want to take profit a uh, moment your target price achieve? Or do you want to set the trailing stop loss? Exactly like how you track a stock, you know? So basically you just identify your own exit strategy. Different people have some greedy people, they, they want to ride the very big ride the wave. Okay, some people they are not greedy, reach their target price, they just take their profit. Okay, some people they like to just slowly adjust their profit taking point up. We call the traveling stop loss. Okay, so in, for me myself, usually if you look at it, this particular we call the A is equivalent to A. So if you look at it, it's particular, uh, it's about at the resistance. You might want to exit before the selling pressure comes in based on the previous price recreation. Get the, re the resistance. So some people they are happy to just take it. Some people, if they set the traveling, they can put it here. 
and then if it break out, doesn't break below here, they just continue to write, write until, let's say here, they put a trailing stop here, then pop, then that's it, you know? So depends on your own risk appetite. Huh? So this one uh, really depends on your own risk appetite. So basically, in short, if you don't understand supply and demand, don't worry, no issue at all. You can just totally trade the spread market using chart only, okay? And we actually do have, uh, do have spread chart in our affiliate Nova as well. Okay, just for your information. If you don't know how to find it, again, you can always ask your respective dealer. Okay, you ask your respective dealer. So how to create a trading plan? First of all, identify the market structure. Second, identify the entry signal. Third, identify the stop loss. And fourth, identify the profit taking. No matter what market you are trading, just follow this four thing. Okay, don't enter and then only you think about what, how to stop loss and stop. Usually that is the wrong move already. Okay, so why trade the CPO calendar spread market? Okay, first of all, easier risk management because you have one long, one short to hedge your risk. Okay, you are only trying to earn the price gap in between two different contract marks. Okay, second is the excellent way to trade the CPO fundamental or the trend seasonality. To me, personally, this is the, the excellent, excellent, the best way to trade the CPO fundamental. A lot of people they ask you about the fundamental view, they want to write it, but sometimes the volatility is too big, they just won't be able to follow it. But CPO spread is the solution to that fundamental trading. Okay, uh, the third one, the availability of the CPO spread chart. So uh, at our Philip Nova, the trading platform that I showed you just now, we do have that CPO spread chart. Okay, so if you don't know how to find it, you can totally track the spread market using the chart. You can always contact your respective dealer, like I said. Okay. The fourth one, the lower margin requirement. So spread margin is, a, uh, is lower than, uh, than the outright margin, okay? If you want to know about the spread margin, you can, again, contact your respective dealer, okay? Or you can type in the comment box later, I will answer it, like, huh? okay? So I, I don't want to, because due to time constraint, I don't want to go into the details of the contract spread and stuff of calendar spread, okay? So uh, before that, just a quick one to tell you about our awesome reward. If you are not our clients yet, okay, if you open an account today, if you open an account today, you will get food panda vouchers. Or if you are our clients today, you trade, you will get cash reward as well, okay? If you are not our clients, you open an account right now until 31st May, uh, until 31st May, you will get your food panda voucher, you will get your cash reward, okay? So it's like a combo for new clients, okay? So if you want, you, you can open it now. And also just another promotion that our company is doing, if you are looking at US indexes right now, or a lot of people are talking about the treasury, we actually have that micro treasury, micro US indexes. Uh, our brokerage at this moment under the promotional period is only 2.5 uh, USD, sorry, 2.5 USD. This is like one of the lowest brokerage in town. Uh -huh. I don't think you can get any lower than this in the market at this moment. Uh -huh. So if you want to trade the US indexes or treasury market, uh, this is the moment, uh, very low brokerage for you, okay? Uh, so uh, just a quick one about uh, this one, just some Q&A, okay? This is for you to win the Food Panda Voucher. So if you are listening to this, okay, you have that chance to, we have three 20 ringgit Food Panda Voucher for you. Okay, just uh, I have some poll here. Okay, so first question here. Okay, first question here. Huh? You answer this, you have the chances to win 20 ringgit of Food Panda Voucher. Okay, now. Okay, are you seeing this? Okay, you can you can pick your question. When were the last promotion? When will be the last promotion that for Onsen reward? I think I mentioned it just now. Okay, you can answer it. Uh, you can answer it. Let's see what answer is correct. Okay, then then we will pick see who will be the winner of this food panda voucher. Okay, uh, just give you guys another ten seconds. Okay, what is the when will the promotion end? Okay, the promotion end at the end of this month. Okay, it's at the end of this month. Correct. I think most of you got it correctly. Now, second question. So when will okay, second question here. So when will be the peak season for palm oil production? When when is it? I think I also mentioned it, I stressed it a few times just now. When will be the peak season? I think we are moving into the peak season at this moment. Okay, so what is the answer? So the answer is, okay, the answer is B, correct. I see most of the people got it correctly. 
So the peak season is from July to October. So we are now in the mid of mid. So we are moving into a peak season. Okay. Uh, now, okay. Uh, okay. Now, the third question. Let's. This is the last question for the chances to win the e panda voucher, food panda voucher. So which country is the top producer for the crude palm oil? Okay, which country? Uh, I think this one, I didn't say it just now, but I think you guys should know that. Huh? Just now I did mention uh, China and Indonesia are the top two. So which one? I think most people also got it correctly. It's in Indonesia, okay? It's Indonesia, correct. Okay, so that's it for the poll. Now let's move on into the Q&A section, okay? Okay. Let's move on to the Q&A section. So let's see uh, if you guys have questions, you guys can just type in the comment box. I will try to answer. We have five to five more minutes to answer your all your questions. You can type your questions in the comment box. Okay. Uh, do we long a CPO? This is uh, by Stephen. Do we long a CPO spread when it is in contango? Okay, this is a super good question. Do we long a CPO spread when we are in a contango market? So yes, you can, you can, you can, definitely you can, because no matter which kind of contango or bad rotation, you definitely can make money out of a long or a short position, definitely. But the only question is, if we are in a contango market, right? When the spread prices go back to that neutral, zero, very near to zero, you don't go and long anymore, you should shop already, you know? So, so you can, but depends what is the spread prices at that moment, okay? That is a very good question. Second question, also by Stephen, where do we get the contango or backwardation chart? Does Philip have this chart? Uh, this one, you don't need a chart to tell, okay? You don't need a chart to tell. You just need to look at the prices of every contract month okay as long as the near month prices is higher than the far month we are in a backwardation market okay you look at all the contract months you will know what kind of market we are in already okay now third question how do we enjoy the margin reduction in trading spread uh this one i think you can i think about this margin reduction thing you should contact your your dealer lah, oh, about brokerage how to uh, the margin require etc etc you, you can contact your dealer to to let you know okay in future would the chart be available for butterfly spread uh, at this moment we don't have butterfly spread chart okay we don't have it yet uh next question what would be your take on the near term cpo prices by mr home uh i think i shared just now for very near term if you are talking about one to two weeks like i said this week, from my own monitoring, uh, the buying interest is quite low. I think everybody is waiting for the Indonesia policy to get clear. Okay, and I, and like I said, Indonesia inventory is, seems like it's piling up. Okay, it's piling up. So everybody has that worry. So buying interest probably is low. So be careful if you are long, if you if you long the CPO outright market. Okay, be careful with that because uh, Indonesia can do anything out of it, okay? They can remove the full bank and then place a quota over it, or they can just remove and there is no further further quota or DMO over it, we don't know, okay? We don't know, I think everybody is waiting for it. Now, next question, would the level shortage persist and therefore cause a strong price in CPO in the near month prices? Uh, I think at this moment, level shortage, if you look at, okay, for me, huh, I, I think this month and last month, I think these two months are uh, uh, a lot of uh, plantation company that actually release their annual report. If you look at the annual report, right, they just released in the past two weeks. They are still talking about the labor shortage a lot. They're still saying that uh, labor shortage is causing causing the production to drop a lot. Okay, they are not picking, not fully picking up all the fruits or the FFB yet. Okay, so at this moment, I will say yes, uh, the labor shortage is still there. Okay. Next question, may I know where can I obtain the data on China and India inventory? Uh, you can just straight away go to Malaysia. You just Google Malaysia Palm Oil Association. Usually they put it on their website. Okay, next question by Ahmad Johari. Near month can be any month as long as it is near earlier than any far month. Yes, Johari, you are correct. Near month can be any month. Okay, it can be any month as 
long as the month that you long or short is nearer than the, the, the next thing, the next contract month that you long or short. Okay, you, your concept is totally correct, Ahmad Johari. Okay, next question, also, also from Ahmad Johari. Uh, above 20 and 50 days moving average is more reliable or on one hour or one day time frame. Okay, this question depends on if you are trading the intraday market or if you are trading the whole swing. If you want to trade the, the swing, okay, you hold it for weeks, for days, for months, okay? Uh, months, I usually don't recommend that, huh? because spread, you reach a certain prices, you still need to exceed. You don't hold it like how you hold stocks, okay? So if you are trading it for weeks, okay, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, it's more recommended to refer to the daily time frame. If you are doing for intraday, then definitely you need to look at a smaller time frame like one hour or 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Okay, it depends what is your, your holding period, what is your preparation. Okay, next question by Hong again. Under one circumstances where the usual four steps deviate. Uh, I'm not sure what is the four steps that you mentioned. Maybe if you want to further elaborate, you can elaborate so I can, I can, I can answer it better. Uh, next question is by Edward. Okay, I can't see the spread continuous chart in Philip Nova. Uh, I think there is no continuous chart uh, in, in Philip Nova. Okay, Bloomberg, they are able, there is no CC chart for, for spread, by the way, just for your information. Lah, huh? So Bloomberg, because Bloomberg is a paid software, we got it from the Bloomberg terminal, that is a paid software. So uh, if you want, you can contact your respective dealer for you to see, lah, or you can contact me to give you the, the chart. Lah. Usually, that is just for us to look at the time frame, or you can just crop from my webinar. I will upload it onto the YouTube. Okay. So, when will it be available in Philip Nova? So, Philip Nova, I think we already have that spread chart. It's just that you don't have CC chart. I think there is no CC chart like that. Okay. So, next question I'm a bit confused about by jet now this is by jet i'm a bit confused about spread trading compared to upright trading okay this is a very very good question jet so you don't confuse about spread trading all right now just let, let me give you one thought about it this is what i have monitored so far so if you reckon that the outright movement right let's say if you think the cpo outright is going to go up 500 to 800 points okay from the price that you are seeing then you long the spread Okay, you long the spread, the chances for you to make money is very high. So if you think that the spread market, uh, the upright market is going to collapse 500 to 800 points, you go and short the spread. Okay, the chances for you to make money is quite high. Okay, so basically they are both tracking the supply and demand. Okay, they are tr both tracking the supply and demand. So if you can make it in the upright market, right, I think spread market for you is like, is like, is like a toy, you know. The spread market, it will be so easy to trade if you can succeed in the upright. But if you can't succeed in the outright, you can start off from the spread market. Okay, so this is this is my point of view. Okay, next question is by Ryan. How long does it take normally for a backwardation market to turn condango? Honestly, this thing we will never know. Okay, we will never know. But if you look at the the, the trend that I showed you, right? Usually will last years. Usually will last years. So when will it change from backwardation to condango? Depends on the supply and demand. Remember the supply and demand that I showed you earlier. As long as that supply suddenly flood the market for a very long period, then the market will just go into contango itself, slowly adjust into the contango direction. Okay, this is a good question as well. Okay, so uh, next question. Uh, I, I, will, I will just tap, I, I saw a lot of questions here. Okay, I saw a lot of questions here. I don't think I'm able to answer all the questions. There are so many questions. Okay, I'll just take another because we are over eight already. I'll just take another two questions. Okay, I'll just take another two questions. Um, by Mr. Sia Wee Kiang. Okay, do you think the recent spread correction has slowly digested the possibility of Indonesia export leave soon? Okay, this is a good question as well. Okay, because this is also a question that I ask myself. Is the current spread correction already digest the Indonesia spread export? Uh, this depends which pair of spread you are talking about, okay? Depends which pair of spread. If you are talking about the spot month spread, right? Then probably, I reckon, it's not that, not fully digest yet. If you are talking about the spot month, I don't think it's fully digesting yet. If you're talking about the further one, let's say August and stuff, I think they are not that impactful. 
I think they digest more than the sportman spread. Okay, this is a good question because I also asked myself this question before. Okay, I'll just take one last one last question. I will just uh also uh, okay one last question uh by Jack as well. Would the spread trading volume affecting the outright or the price direction? Uh, I think this I can't fully answer you, but as far as I see, the spread trading volume is not affecting the outright one. Okay, in price direction, I don't think so. I don't think so. But nonetheless, spread, remember, like I said, is the supply tightness. So as long as the supply is tight, actually the outright prices should go up as well. The outright should go up as well, as long as that supply is tight. Okay, so this is going back to that supply and demand. So outright and spread are actually very, very correlated. They are very correlated. Okay, so uh, basically this is, I'll just do this much Q&A tonight. Okay, so uh, this is the, for those that wants to open account, you can scan this QR code, okay? You can scan this QR code. And also you can just find us from our social media, okay? And like I said, these are the contact from our branches. So me, myself, I'm actually from Kuching. I'm from Kuching. So if you want to, if you want to talk to us, or if you want to ask me about, um, if you want to ask me about uh, the fundamental, you want people, you want some opinion, you can always contact me like, oh, I'm from Kuching. Or if you want anything, you can just contact your respective branch dealer. Okay, they are all very helpful. Okay, so thank you for your time joining us tonight. Okay, thank you for your time joining us tonight. So so I think that's it for, for the events tonight. Uh, with that, I think we will end our webinar tonight. And thank you and have a very good night. Bye-bye.